Stella Stevens was one of the most dazzling stars of 1960s Hollywood. With her flowing blonde hair, piercing blue eyes, and voluptuous and curvy figure, she captivated audiences in films like The Nutty Professor, The Silencers, and The Poseidon Adventure. She was a versatile actress who could play comedy, drama, romance, and action with equal flair. She was also a model who graced the pages of Playboy magazine and a producer who founded her own production company. But behind the glamorous image, there was a woman who struggled with the sexism and limitations of the film industry. She had dreams of being more than a bombshell, but often found herself typecast or overlooked by male directors and producers. In this video, we'll explore her life and career and reveal which film role she hated the most. Facts First presents Stella Stevens Revealed Her Most Hated Movie Role Stella Stevens was born as Estelle Caro Eggleston on October 1, 1938 in Yazoo City, Mississippi. She was the sole child of Thomas Eggleston, an insurance salesman, and Dovey Estelle Caro, a registered nurse. When she was four, her family moved to Memphis, where she grew up. She attended Memphis State University and studied music and drama. She had a tumultuous personal life from an early age. She married an electrician named Noble Herman Stevens when she was 16 and gave birth to their son Herman six months later. The couple divorced in 1957, but Stella and her son kept using a variation of his surname as their stage names. Stella began her career as a model and appeared in several magazines, including Playboy. She won several beauty contests and was crowned Miss Tennessee USA in 1959. Not long after, she caught the attention of Hollywood producers and signed her first contract with 20th Century Fox that same year. However, she was dropped after six months and moved to Paramount. Stella's Film Career at Paramount, Stella got her first big break as Appassionata von Climax in the 1959 musical comedy Lil Abner, which was based on the comic strip by Al Cap. She then appeared in several TV shows like Alfred Hitchcock Presents, General Electric Theater, Bonanza, The Twilight Zone, Ben Casey, The Fugitive, and more. Her film career took off in the early 60s when she starred opposite Jerry Lewis in 1963's the Nutty Professor, a spoof of Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. In the film, she played Stella Purdy, a college student who falls for Lewis's nerdy alter ego, Julius Kelp. The film was a huge hit and firmly established Stella as a leading lady and a sex symbol. She continued to work with some of the biggest names in Hollywood like Dean Martin, Elvis Presley, Glenn Ford, Tony Curtis, and many more. Some of her most notable films include The Silencers, Where Angels Go, Trouble Follows, The Ballad of Cable Hogue, and The Poseidon Adventure. Stella also ventured into producing and directing films through her own company, Solitaire Productions. She made her directorial debut with The Ranch, a comedy about four women who run a brothel in Nevada. She also produced several films starring her son Andrew Stevens, like The Massacre at Central High, Las Vegas Lady, and Day of the Animals. Stella's Most Hated Role Elvis Presley was not only the king of rock and roll, but he was also a star of the silver screen. He starred in 31 feature films between 1956 and 69, most of which were musicals that showcased his singing and dancing talents. Especially when Presley was at the peak of his popularity, one of the most significant career boosts that young up-and-coming actresses could receive was being cast alongside him. A few actresses who shared the screen with the king include Judy Tyler, Dolores Hart, Shelley Fabaris, and Nancy Sinatra. While many women would have given just about anything to link up with Elvis, Stella Stevens was one of the few actresses who didn't want to work with him. In fact, she hated her role as Ross Carpenter's love interest in 1962's Girls, 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 a musical comedy about a fisherman who sings and romances his way through Hawaii. Stella was forced to take part by her studio Paramount, who wanted to cash in on Elvis's popularity. She later described it as the worst piece of shit that she ever did and a nightmare. So, why did she loathe her role so much? For one thing, she had no chemistry with Elvis. She said he was cold and distant, and that they never talked or rehearsed together. She also felt he was more interested in his entourage than his co-star. For another thing, she had no respect for the film's script or the songs. She said they were stupid and boring, and lamented the fact that she had to lip-sync to someone else's voice. She also complained her character was dumb and unrealistic. 
Stella desperately wanted to do more challenging and meaningful roles than being Elvis's arm candy. Furthermore, she felt working with Elvis was holding her back from achieving her potential. She was later quoted as saying, Elvis didn't help me at all. He didn't hurt me, but he didn't help me. She also said, I don't think he ever helped anybody but himself. Stella's Later Years Stella Stevens had a promising start in Hollywood, starring with some of the biggest names in the industry. She was nominated for a Golden Globe for her role in The Nutty Professor and garnered more critical acclaim for Poseidon Adventure. While she was at one point one of the most sought-after starlets of her time, her career eventually began to decline after the 1970s. In later interviews, she said she got too old for Hollywood and they did not want women over 40. She blamed sexism and typecasting for limiting her opportunities. She complained they always wanted her to play dumb blondes or sexy women, and they did not take her seriously as an actress or filmmaker. Despite these hurdles and setbacks, Stella did not give up on her passion for acting and filmmaking. She continued to work in low-budget films, TV shows, and stage plays. She also became a producer and director of her own films, such as 1989's The Ranch and 1997's The American Heroine. In later interviews, she said she loved making movies and she didn't care about fame or money, but about art and expression. Sadly, she was diagnosed with Alzheimer's disease in 2010. She spent the last years under the care of her son, Andrew Stevens, who's also an actor and producer. She died on February 17, 2023, at the age of 84, leaving behind a legacy of films that showcased her beauty, charm, and talent. Stella's Battle with Alzheimer's Coping with and ultimately dying of Alzheimer's disease was a living nightmare for Stella. It's a progressive brain disorder that causes memory loss, confusion, personality changes, and eventually death. She suffered from stage 7 Alzheimer's disease, which is the most severe stage, where patients lose their ability to communicate, recognize their loved ones, or perform basic tasks. Shortly after receiving her diagnosis, Stella was moved to an Alzheimer's care facility in Los Angeles, where she received around-the-clock care from nurses and doctors. Her son Andrew visited her regularly, but said it was nothing short of heartbreaking to see his mother deteriorate. He says Alzheimer's disease affected not only his mother, but his grandmother and great-aunt as well. Alzheimer's disease takes its toll on the patient, but also on everyone else around. It's a cruel disease that robs one of their dignity. Stella lost most of her memories of her life and career due to Alzheimer's. She couldn't remember working with Elvis or Jerry Lewis or being in Playboy. She couldn't remember making movies or directing films or being nominated for awards. She died peacefully in her sleep on February 17th after battling the disease for more than a decade. Her son Andrew said he was grateful she didn't suffer any more pain or confusion. He said he hoped people would remember his mother as a talented actress who brought joy to millions of fans. Now it's time to hear from you. Did you know Stella Stevens felt like she was forced into appearing in Elvis Presley's Girls, Girls, Girls? And she thought the film had a terrible script? Let us know in the comments section below.